Okay, so now that we have our sound card set up, now we have to take care of the software side. So we're going to launch Cubase uh, that comes with the task cam. And the first thing we want to make sure is that our sound driver is installed properly. So we want to go to Devices, Device Setup. And under VST Multitrack uh, is where we're going to find our driver make sure that it's installed properly. So under ASIO driver uh, you can see that it says the Tascam 122 which means our driver installed correctly. If it doesn't say the Tascam you want to make sure that you are selecting that. because Then now the sound card will communicate with Cubase. Under control panel just a little more options. Uh, I always set it to lowest latency. It sort of reduces um, slight delays when you're recording or playing with your with the MIDI keyboard um, lowest latency. So I'm going to want to apply and then hit OK. So the next thing we want to check are VST inputs. So again under devices I'm going to go to VST inputs and we just want to again make sure that it says the task cam drivers there. Uh, we want to make sure that the button is active and when it's lit up it's active and it's showing that we have two inputs available which the task cam has. Um, you can rename these if you want other than input one and two you can rename them mic one and two you could rename them vocal guitar uh, really you can rename them whatever you want whatever helps you uh, organize your, your files So close that, that'll save it, and we're ready to open up our first project. So I'm just going to choose an empty project, and you're going to want to make sure you know where you saved this project, because within this folder will be all of our audio files that we record. So you want to know where that is. So now I'm going to go to Project, and I want to add some audio tracks. So I'm going to go to Multi, and I'm going to add two audio tracks. Hit OK. So now I have my two audio tracks. And you're going to want to make sure that you relabel these tracks, not audio one, but you want to relabel them what you're recording. It's the easiest thing to do. So actor one, actor two, guitar one, uh, whatever you're recording, you're going to want to type it in. If these files ever get lost on your computer, at least if you label them, you'll have somewhat of an idea of where those files are. If they're just audio one, audio two, dash three, you're not going to know what is actually on the audio file. So please rename your audio tracks. You can make your tracks bigger or smaller by just positioning your mouse in between the two tracks. If you want to make them bigger or smaller, I like to have them pretty big when I'm recording just so I can see the waveform. So now we have our two tracks. We've relabeled our tracks. So the next thing to look at is to make sure that our input for each of the tracks is set properly. So the first track is in input one. And I'm just going to select track number two so it's highlighted. And it says input two. So those are set. So you want to make sure that each track has its own input. That way they're recording independently. Rather than if they have the same input, they're going to record the same thing. The next thing you want to make sure is the record enable button is selected on both tracks. So you want them both to be highlighted in red. And the record monitor button just allows you to hear what you're recording when your microphone is plugged in and set up. Um, so if you want to hear what your input is, you want to monitor and have that selected. When you're playing back though, after you've recorded, you do not want those highlighted because then you won't hear what's on your computer. So very important, you want to save everything before you start recording because you have your setup ready to go. Uh, and then the only thing left to do is to record. So hit the record button and you're ready to go.